Hey everybody, this is Sully with 5 Freaking Onion Rings. I am running through the Leader 120 setup, and this is based on a UAV tech video I saw recently where he puts in, plug it in, he puts in his, uh, the new dynamic filter changes for Betaflight 4.0, and, um, I wanted to try it out. So, what we have to do here, um, he was using an older version of, of Betaflight. I am using 1400. Uh, which is awesome. It's amazing. So what you want to plug in your quad hit the activate bootloader That always sets off a long thing to me go to your firmware flasher Show unstable enable expert mode no reboot full chip erase manual baud rate I'm on the leader. So that's the omnibus use whichever one you want firmware 1400 you want to select that load online which mine's already there and then you want to hit flash. Like I say, I've already flashed. So, yeah, we're just jumping through that. I'm going to disconnect. Uh oh. All right. And we're reconnecting. I hope. It's very loud. Connecting, going through here. Uh, first off, I'm using Fly Sky, so make sure Enable Expert Mode is on. Going to Ports, UART 3 is Serial. Turning that on, Save and Reboot. That is so your receiver will work. Use whichever port you know is yours. Now, if you notice, my CPU load is already at 47%, and it actually is higher than that when you flash fresh. I'm going through my settings, not setting up new, so these will not be the same, but these are what I am using, and they are amazing. Configuration, DSHOT 600. This 5.5 is now default in version 1400. It is uh, great because you don't get any desyncs. Quad X, this is default, this is all default, arming 180, and that way if your accelerometer is on and you get stuck in a tree, you can arm and disarm to wiggle yourself out. This defaults to 8K, 2K. For what I'm about to do, according to UAV tech, you have to have a minimum of 4K for gyro update frequency. So I wanted to make sure I caught that and did 8K, 4K. I'm normally 8K, 2K but 8K, 4K. It is well worth the hit to the processor. It is great. Camera angle, I don't use FPV mix anymore, so there's that. Uh, make sure you pick your serial based. If you're using that, I don't think people use the other ones anymore. Honestly, I don't know who would, but serial based. I don't have RSSI, I don't have 3D that I want, GPS I want. I do like to always enable air mode, and I don't use any of these. So air mode, I don't have an ESC sensor, so anti-gravity and dynamic filter are stock, or they're uh, normal. I always deselect USB, because I don't like to have it beeping on the bench, but if you already heard, it's beeping on the bench all the time. So no big deal. Save and reboot. And we're just going to jump down to power. Onboard ADC, none for current meter. Since there isn't one, you select what you need. I always put my warning cell 3-2. I normally put it at 3-3, but at 3-2, I didn't have any issues, so I like it. In this version 1400, it gives you a real-time readout, not a delayed readout, so you can see exactly where your battery is at the exact point. And I'll show you in the, in the flight video exactly what I mean. There's a lot of exactly's in that figure. So fail-safe, I like to have 0.8 seconds, uh, you do what you want, and 100 is fine, I don't really worry about throttle low delay, oh it disarms if your throttle is at low for 10 seconds, that's cool, I didn't know it would do that, um, but this if you lose control, if you get out of range of your, res of your radio, uh, it will just drop out of the sky at 0.8 seconds of no signal. Alright, going PID tuning. Here's where the fun is. 
Alright, so I'm on an F3 board, so my smart feed forward and I turn relax do not work, but I do not care. Um, these are the default PIDs that are on 1400. These are default, and they're amazing, I have to say. For a 2.8 inch, so a 2.5 to 3 inch, probably a 2 inch as well. Here's where the changes come, and this is off of UAV Tech. In here, these are going to be enabled, these are going to be enabled. So what you need to change, this number to 150, this number to 200, by quad, by quad, turn these off. In the past, this would obliterate your motors. <laughs> uh, but in the current present, these, um, this change made my motors cooler than 3.55, much cooler. And I'm flying today in 65 degree weather, so in the sunlight and this this is the magic right here um 1400s dynamic filters he says have some great updates and i cannot disagree so 150 here 200 here by quad by quad save it going back to pids these are stock these are my rates that i always use uh, it makes for a very sensitive twitchy quad so i don't know if you want to copy those or not does not matter but the rates are stock for 1400 i changed none of this absolutely none smooth for anti-gravity it's great receiver you just want to set however yours is since this is an f3 board i would normally use filter but f3 can only use interpolation i would like to get a performance version but i haven't had a chance to flash one so if anyone has a flash of uh, 1400 for f3 performance i would love it if you got it for an omnibus low threshold i always set it 1010 and 1990 but I don't think it really makes a big difference I leave these default 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 yada 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 uh, make sure these work modes I was in a hurry today so I only set the ones I want which are arm angle horizon set it to what button you need it I always turn a beeper on so I can find this little thing and that's it now if you I do not have launch control on this one, and I don't know if that's because I didn't set it, or if that's because it's not flashed here. But I do not have launch control. I'm kind of sad about that, because I like launch control, but I don't really care, because I don't care. Uh, let's see. So that's it for here. Don't have to do anything here. OSD, set it up the way you like. Uh, mine's timers, throttle, warning cell. I do like having G-Force, just because it's interesting. Anti-gravity just tells me whenever I'm being a little too aggressive on the sticks, so I like it. And my ending, and yeah, not a big deal there. Hey, I just wanted to throw this in. If you have Betaflight 10.5 configurator that is required, or that you have to install like Chrome, go over to UAV Tech, and he'll show you, he has a great video on how to install. So if you notice, this is Betaflight 4.0 on 10.5, and the configurator you have to install in Chrome. And it has a couple of new changes to it. Um, not on this. Not too much in the useful parts, at least that I've noticed. And um, yeah, so not too much in the useful parts. But when you get down to OSD, if you're in configurator 10.4, all of these are actually unknown and one of the cool ones is motor diagnostics and that will pop up four bars and it will show you what your outputs of each motor are this is pretty cool and that it'll tell you if which way to flip um, which side motors are up in turtle mode that's pretty cool so that you'll know which way you can flip over so that one that one's really cool if you use turtle mode sensors tether black box these are all things I don't worry about. Now, going into CI, CLI, this is what UAV tech said, which was get dime. And that will tell you your dynamic notch range for these three inch and under. He wants it to be high. I did not. Um, he was using a different version. So I left it on auto and it worked beautifully. Dynamic width percentage eight and allowed range 0 to 20. In the other version, it used to go to 100, and this would be 40. Um, I don't know 
I, I think they changed the range on it, obviously, if it's 0 to 20. But 8 worked great. Dynamic Notch Q, 120, and Dynamic Min Hertz, 150. Uh, I have not changed any of these, so this is what you should see on 1400. And from here, we're going to go fly and uh, make this great. So, yay. That is it for setting up for 1400. Let's jump over to the flight now. So I just want to start off here and say that this is the tightest roll I've ever done in my entire life with no bounce back at all. All right, so I don't know if you noticed, the first thing off is that the voltage is now exact numbers and not just a queued up thing so you can see how your voltage is doing in real time. I love that. Uh, so is your G-meter. And I'm not sure if they're 100% accurate yet. I didn't get a chance to test that, but I do like the precision on it. So that's really nice. If you do a punch out, you can see just how much voltage sag you have. What I want to talk about, though, is how this is totally destroying every expectation I ever had. Half of these moves I'm doing are just to cause uh, prop wash, and I get one bobble. I can't even hear it whenever I'm flying. Uh, it's like one bobble at the end instead of two or three. It's barely noticeable, and I am trying my best to induce it without ever really being successful. One thing about this, I didn't set my feet forward anything above 60, and I didn't touch the PIDs, so these are stock. You saw my settings 100%. And uh, it's uh, just literal think and go. I mean, there is nothing that's causing any delay, any anything. This is literal think, and as soon as you move, you are definitely like going in that direction. I, I don't know how the beta flight devs have done it. I've loved every version of 4.0, but what shocks me about this one is how sharp, tight, and in control it feels without any negative... I didn't find a single negative thing about this. It was absolutely astonishing. My motors came down and they felt a tiny bit warm. And for 1104 7500, anything after 3.3 beta flight, the motors would heat up slightly to more than I like, depending 3.4 being the worst. But for 3.5, they got a little bit better. For this 4 with the dynamic filter changing, holy cow, it is a good, noticeable difference. You can barely feel it on your fingers. Um, you can tell they've been run, but you can't, uh, you can't think there's any problem at all. This is a 65 degree day, and um, normally, like I say, it would heat up my motors more. With the filtering changes, I was kind of worried, but uh, no, this, this is a remarkable improvement. Um, I can't say enough about that. The other thing about it, and I'm not the best pilot, obviously, but for everything I'm doing here, I'm used to a certain amount of prop wash and a certain amount of wishy-washiness, and I'm getting none of that. This is just by far fly-by-rail best I've ever felt bar none. Um, even on tune quads, I've had a chance to fly a few, and you know, it's like, ooh, this is really locked in. This is out of the box with a couple of dynamic filter changes. I mean, it's astonishing. I can't wait until this comes out for just general release. Obviously, your mileage may vary, and you might see something different, but I am just blown away. This is by far, even with that... Uh, that power loop there was a little bobble but that was literally me dropping straight down into the prop wash like just straight down and it should have shaken it a lot more than that instead I get like a little bit of a blip so I'm just putting this out there you know just to try it because I for one am not I've always been worried about beta versions of things and development versions since there are always problems but I want to just tell you just how good 1400 really is and what we have to look forward to um, that keep an eye over there on UAV tech he has some great great videos he gives thorough explanations on how to use the new versions and the new some of the new features I just go by these instructions I'm not a developer or anything I'm not saying do this you'll love it but I am saying I did this and I absolutely love it if you stuck in this long thank you so much give me a like and a subscribe down below uh, tell me what you want to see coming up and um, we'll catch you later just watch the rest of the flight which was right there all right
Take care.